Berkhamsted was an important medieval town, its castle guarding the strategic gap in the Chiltern Hills cut by the River Bourbon. A Roman road known to the Anglo-Saxons, who later settled here as Aikman Street, passes through this cutting. The Grand Junction Canal followed it in the 1790s, later renamed the Grand Union Canal, linking the Thames Basin to the industrial powerhouses of Birmingham and the North. Railway builders arrived in the 1830s and in the later 20th century motor traffic choked the town until the bypass arrived. Good afternoon everyone, I hope you're keeping well. I'm back in Hertfordshire today with the very lovely Candice, here she is. Hello! And we're in Berkhamstead. It's a very cold day. It's very, very cold. Berkhamstead has got a hell of a lot of history. It's even got a castle, which we have visited before. It's owned by English Heritage. And the ruins are actually open today. The little museum isn't, of course, because of the C word. I will put a link to that video up here. So we're on a little five mile walk today, a circular route from the 50 walks in Hertfordshire book by the AA. Good series of books, I highly recommend them. So I thought I'd quickly answer a couple of questions I've had about guidebooks. People have asked me, Tom, what guidebooks do you use? So I, I use the AA ones, just bring it in a bit closer. So AA does a really good series of, of books based on counties and stuff, whatever county you're in or choosing to walk in. And yeah, just look for AA 50 walks in and then whatever county you want to do. We use the year round walks books as well. So just type year round walks in whatever county again. Then you do sort of like seasonal based walks as well. The other ones I tend to use as well are Cicerone guidebooks. They're a little bit more expensive, but the, the, the map detailing is far better. So I'd highly recommend grabbing those and they usually do those um, once again based on counties as well or regions. And the final ones I haven't used for a while, I think, I think are called Pathfinder guides. They're usually like green and they've got kind of like a laminated weatherproof kind of cover to them which is really good and they use OS Explorer uh, maps so they're really detailed the one thing I will say about the AA guidebooks like the one we're using today really good on directions and historical notes the historical notes are second to none on these um, and I'm not gonna lie that's where I get most of my stuff from like all those voiceovers that's that is just me reading the book, <laughs> I'm afraid. Um, the downside to them is the maps are a bit naff. You definitely need to bring an OS Explorer map with you of that area. So you should do it anyway, but you definitely need it with those. Anywho, so yeah, hope that helps. I have got a cider to review a little bit later on. And we've got some lovely vegetable soup and some rolls as well. Candice's chief navigator, Dora the Explorer today. It's enough talking, let's get walking. Opposite the town, beyond the Grand Union Canal, lies Berkhamsted Park, which is on land that Lord Brownlow of Ashridge gave to the town as compensation for his attempted enclosure of Berkhamsted Common in 1863. He had five foot metal fences erected around the vast common, but locals, aided by a trainload of London toughs, all organised by the MP Augustus Smith tore them down. Lord Brownlow eventually gave in after what was known as the Battle of Berkhamstead. Thank you. 
In the centre of the town, a cobbled alley leads to the 16th century timber framed courthouse by the churchyard gates. St Peter's Church is large and mostly 13th century with an unusually long nave for a parish church. Cruciform its crossing is surmounted by a tower of 1536. Inside is a good collection of late medieval brasses, some medieval stained glass and some fine monuments, including one to a John Sayer of 1682, who was chief cook to King Charles II. So we've stopped in the church, which happens to be open, in St Peter's in Berkhamsted. I know what you're saying, why haven't you got masks on? There's no one else in here at the moment, so... Plus we're eating. Plus we're going to stop in here and eat, because it's freezing cold outside, and we had planned to maybe stop and eat something uh, along the, the canal. So I'm gonna have to be really quiet because I think someone's come in here to pray. Um, but yeah, we, we wanted to sit in here just out of the out of the cold and eat. I've got a flask of hot Heinz vegetable soup. Candice has made the rolls or the baps as she calls them. What are they? You've got, she's got a ham one, mm -hmm. and I've got two cheese ones that she's made. Just finished that soup, and that was lovely, it was just what I needed. You can't beat a bit of Heinz vegetable soup on a cold day. And Candice's cheese baps were really nice as well. I've also got a cider. I don't really know if I should have that in here. So it's a Haywood Farm Cider, it's apple and elderflower, 4%, lightly sparkling crisp apple cider, hand-picked and pressed, 
Cornish Craft Cider, St Mabin. So this was uh, one of two ciders very kindly given to me by James and Mary from the channel Bad Hair Adventures. They went to Cornwall ages ago and had got me two ciders, so cheers. The wild elderflower that surrounds our orchards makes the perfect companion for a light and crisp floral drink. All our apples are grown, pressed and fermented at Haywood Farm in Cornwall, home of the Bray family since 1919. Visitors can enjoy the beautiful surroundings at one of our many tours and events throughout the year. Well, that's interesting. That's a really, really odd taste. The elderflower is very, very strong. It's almost a little bit too strong, the elderflower. Candice has come back just in time for the cider review. <laughs> Candice has decided to give up all alcohol for the year. <laughs> so it's down to me to do the drinking. It's quite a flat side of this. I don't think there's any fizz to it. That's not the worst thing about it though. The elderflower is very, very strong. There's no one over there. No, there's a door, there's a door leading out. So they've gone out? Yeah. So there's no one in here? No. I've been talking really <laughs> quietly for the last few minutes thinking there was someone in here. So there's no one in here. Apparently there was a, another door and they've gone out through that. Yeah. Anyway, right. So yeah, this side is like... It's, it's very drinkable still. I still drink it, but the elderflower is very, very prevalent. It's almost slightly off-putting because it, it becomes quite floral and medicinal tasting. I don't really know what to give it. I don't want to give it the usual scoring, but it's not worthy of an 8. It's not worthy of a 9. I'd give it a, a 6.75 out of 10. Um, so it's still above average. Average being 5 out of 10, let's say and it, it's, it's it's nice but they've probably gone a little bit overboard with the elderflower but i'll still i'll still happily drink that though so cheers james and mary check out their channel bad hair adventures i'm still talking quietly i don't know why do you realize you do that in a church people talk when they say talk really quietly no i don't, don't you? know don't you oh i, I don't i just go hello everyone <laughs> right yeah um yeah Hello. Back, <laughs> you prick. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna finish that off. I can eat them crisps now as well. Got a bag of crisps, and Candice was like, "Don't eat them in here because they'll make too much noise if someone's praying." <laughs> no one praying, is there? Oh, as lunchtime stops go, this is probably one of the more memorable, and it's actually still quite cold in here as yeah. well. It's Can quite a big place, there's no heaters on. Yeah, Candice, bless her, is freezing. Yeah. That's why she's clapping. Yeah, I'll get my circulation going. Yeah, it's a rainoids. Yeah, with winter it kind of doesn't do... You know. She's got two pairs of gloves on. Yeah, and I'm still cold. A normal pair and then a fingerless pair and she's still cold, bless her. Yeah. She's, I've given her my hand warmers though. Well, they were hers that she gave to me and I went, you need them more than me. I have got my hair up because I couldn't be bothered to wash yeah, it. That's all right. It's fine. Yeah. Don't have to explain yourself to these these ragamuffins. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's um yeah that's an old term. What anyway, yeah. Anyway, anyway, we're going we're going way off off topic here. This will be like a two hour video. No. Visit Berkhamsted Castle with its superb earthwork ramparts, moats and high keep mound or mot. The mot is about 45 foot high with the remains of the stone keep and a deep well at its summit. The first castle, including the earthwork mot and bailey, was built by William the Conqueror's half-brother Robert of Mortain 
after 1067, the surviving stonework all dating after this. From the Mott summit, we can look down into the bailey with the remains of its 12th century encircling stone walls and towers. Beyond are the reedy moats and further earthen ramparts. The siege of Berkhamsted Castle in 1216 followed the civil war between King John and his barons after the signing of Magna Carta at Runnymede, an island in the Thames in 1215. The barons had unwisely called on King Philip Augustus of France to help them. He sent his son Louis le Dauphin and a French army. They ravished Hertfordshire, capturing both Berkhamsted and Hartford castles and occupying St Albans before being ousted in 1217. Hello again everyone, we are back at the castle, the ruins of Berkhamsted Castle, other side of this wall and the railway line is literally right next to us. This is where I parked the car earlier. We just went to go and have a look in the castle and the guy said it was it was closed and everyone was clearing out so apologies we didn't get time to have a look in there we did have a lot to do on this walk yeah. so it was gonna be tight anyway but luckily of course I filmed a video here before so you can check that out of yeah. course it's up there somewhere I'm gonna leave it there we're gonna sit in the car and get the heater on because it is so we cold really sorry Candice is down there <laughs> I always forget I have to I start up here and I have to go down here for for the little lovely that is Candice. It was yeah, a good got a good walk. What are you hiding behind it for? No. Come here. Um yeah, no, it was really good fun that one. I enjoyed that walk. Um with with more daylight hours it would be yeah. fantastic. So I'd highly recommend this one if you're in the Hertfordshire area. Yeah. Anyways, until next time, take care of yourselves, look after each other and stay safe. Stay warm. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you later. Du 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 du